Kevin Duffy. Thank you. How's everybody doing? My name's Coach Kevin Duffy. I'm a rotational power and strength coach in the greater Boston area. I'm here today to provide you with four exercises. Four exercises that are going to help us play stronger golf and help us take more money off of our playing partners this year. That's the goal. We all love playing golf. We all love beating our friends more. Some of the favorite stories we hear about golf either start or end on the first tee box. We hear beautiful stories. We also see horror stories. Now let's talk about a scenario. You're up with about three of your members. It's about your first serious round of golf this year. You're excited to play. You gave yourself a whole five minutes to warm up. You show up, take a couple of wiggles with your driver, and you're going off second. You haven't really done a warm up routine. You're just going out. You're following somebody who just absolutely smashed one right down the center. You're going up second, and you're trying to step on one. Instead of the scenario that you've seen in your head that you've been envisioning your entire off season, for example, in New England, it's eight degrees right now. That's all we're thinking about is playing. If you've been seeing a ball flight that has looked something like a fade, you get up on your first swing. I am a lefty. You get up on your first swing, you hit a towering hook that lands OB in front of everybody on your first tee box. You're shook. You're nervous. You're worried. You're hoping it's just jitters. You're re teeing after your first swing of the year. Everybody's laughing at you. This is the worst case scenario. You hit again. You're hoping it's just jitters. Instead, you have the same results. You have back pain. You're walking off the course. Your season is now in jeopardy. And that group continues as a threesome for the rest of the day. What I just painted might be the worst case scenario you could all think of. I'm praying that nobody here has been involved in that or seen it. But I think what we're missing during that horrible story, during all that carnage, is the first guy who teed off. The first guy who teed off knew he was teeing off first before anybody even stepped up there. He knew he was going first because he put in the work this off season. He busted his ass to make sure that he is going to not only beat everybody he's playing with, but everybody he plans to play in future tournaments. And in every outing he goes on, he plans on taking a lot of people's money this year. The first guy did not ignore the physical tools required in the off season to play his best golf. The physical tools I'm talking about are balance, posture, flexibility, mobility, power, but the main reason I'm here to talk to you today is strength. Strength training is something we want to attack in an off-season window, it's January. Not a lot of us have tournaments. If you're in Florida and you're in a tournament right now, that's awesome, good for you. Most of us do not have uh, a lot of tournaments going on right now. This off-season window allows us to go after strength training. Now, the word strength training and heavy training were for a long time taboo. If I told my golfers when I first got them, hey, I'm Coach Duff, this is what we do, we train heavy, everybody's running. The routine I have to get you comfortable with is similar to like when you first started drinking coffee. When I first started drinking coffee, it had 90% cream, a dash of, dash of coffee, and like 27 scoops of sugar. Currently, the coffee I take down is so strong it can now bench press me. The point of that silly story is that it takes us a little while to get to the good stuff. It takes us a little while to get towards heavy strength training. The four exercises I'm gonna give you are farm walk, 
deadlift, pull up, and a step up variation. I'm very confident that every single one of us can step right into the gym and start training those lifts. What is heavy to you might not be heavy to some of the clients I'm working with online or in person because they've become accustomed to this type of training and they can't wait for it. Most guys or girls don't enjoy the off season. My clients enjoy the off season because that's when we take on challenges. That's when we take on, what were your numbers last year? Where were we at this time? What are our goals? How am I attacking these things? Now, instead of me just simply talking about the things, you're gonna be better off learning from me showing the exercises. Now, I have noticed that it is somewhat like pulling teeth to get people up here to demonstrate exercises. I have provided merch. Everybody loves free merch. You love it even more if it has a really expensive brand name like Yeti and I strapped a sweet logo on it. So who wants to get some free merch? You want some free merch? Come on up, sir. You are also going to do a, a deadlift, so this isn't totally free. There you go, you just got conned. There's uh, two other exercises you can go next. What's your name? Jeff. Jeff, nice to meet you. Kevin, here's your water bottle. You're gonna need that later. This is gonna be super hard. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so, Jeff, do you have any injuries I should know about? Lower back is not great, but you have a belt on it. That's fine. Okay, so every single one of our clients is going to deadlift. They're gonna deadlift. If they have pain, we will be modifying. Am I gonna give Jeff the heaviest weight I can find over there at the Hammer Strength and Life Fitness uh, podium? Am I gonna go find the heaviest weight, give it to him and see what happens? Absolutely not. That'd be a horrible idea. I'd get kicked off the stage, it'd be a disaster. Jeff is gonna learn how to deadlift and then we will load him. What might be heavy for Jeff might not be heavy for me, but if he goes from zero to 25 pounds, I've made a huge increase, okay? So before you deadlift, I'm gonna teach you the pattern. You're gonna cross your arms across your chest, hey Macarena, okay? These are gonna be slightly bent. You're gonna push your butt towards that exit sign, and you're gonna put your eyes on one of these sweet CoachKevinDuffy.com logoed things. Good. Awesome. Now come on up again. I'm going to have you pretend I'm pulling on your belt buckle here. And you're going to push your butt really like an exaggerated low kid's iron. There you go. Where'd you feel that? Hamstring. Back here. Cool. So now, Jeff, I'm going to have you go a little bit more towards an exaggerated version of your golf posture. So this is a golf posture. This is I've got a really teeny tiny club golf posture. That's where I'm going to have you go. Keep pushing your butt. Keep pushing your butt. Yeah, look at that sweet logo. Good, still in the hamstring? Good, so now, Jeff, hold on. When you go to pick this up, every single time you pick up a weight, you can stand up. Every time you pick up a weight, I'm gonna have you bend your knees, whether it's picking up a weight, a child, some boxes at home, whatever you drop on the floor, you're gonna bend your knees to pick it up, and you're gonna stand. Go ahead and pick it up. Great, stand up. Okay, now, we're gonna go over those same cues I just gave you. You're gonna tilt your butt back towards the wall. You're gonna look down at that awesome logo and you're gonna push that weight back towards your heels. Over here, push your butt back, keep pushing your butt. Keep pushing your butt. Good, stand on up. Now where'd you feel that? Hamstring, that's where we're going, okay? Now, also, what we, you guys didn't notice is Jeff is facing you, you're gonna have him turn. What I'm gonna also focus on now is making sure that I take his shoulders and square them up. There's gonna be an upper body component to this lower body exercise. You're gonna pretend I put a grape in between your shoulders. Go ahead and squeeze that grape. Now give me that same deadlift. Good, push that butt to the wall. Good, keep that grape. Good, and stand. Okay, awesome. Still in the hamstrings or did it shift? Okay, you felt a little bit of tightness up top? That's what I'm going for. Good, go ahead and drop that down. You're all set with it. Good. Take your free merch, you're awesome, and I'll touch base with you later, good job. Okay, so all of my clients are gonna do a deadlift. Every single one of them is gonna do a deadlift. At some point in time, whether I have a back injury or I don't, 
you're gonna learn the deadlift pattern. The deadlift pattern is where I can make, if I picked one exercise, one exercise to give my clients, if I make them strong in the deadlift pattern, I make them confident in the deadlift pattern, I put them over a ball and I have installed confidence into how they move. If I just do that one thing, I left a athlete who was not as strong, I now put a stronger athlete on the tee with confidence. All of us swing coaches know, not me, I stink at golf, my guys will tell you that. I don't stink, I'm getting better. If I install confidence in that athlete now, just by getting them better at that one lift, I have already made them a better uh, client, student, and athlete going forward. So that's just one exercise. If I load that pattern, get them strong there, it's gonna, I'm gonna see dividends immediately. The next exercise I wanna go over is farm walk. Ma'am, I believe you wanted to do some sweet farm walks and get some sweet merch. What's your name? Catherine. Catherine. Nice to meet you. Okay, Catherine, you are going to do a farm walk. That one's heavy. This one's not as heavy. Okay, so it is an uneven walk. Why do we have an uneven walk? We don't have even weights, so I got creative. You are also going to pick that weight up the same way I just told Jeff. You're gonna bend your knees, you're gonna grab that weight, and you're gonna walk across the stage. Yeah, big difference. Okay, awesome. Okay, you can put that down. So now, when we walked in a farm walk position, we are resisting side movement, okay? When she walked, I just told her, pick it up, walk across the stage. Didn't give her any instructions, that's the point. Now, when you pick up this weight, you're gonna feel the urge to move from side to side, obviously more so on this right side. You're gonna brace in your obliques so that when I walk, I don't have side to side movement, your shoulders are gonna be squared up, and you're gonna be looking at that King of Speed logo all the way down there, okay? Go ahead and bend down and pick those up, awesome. Walk with intent, perfect. Walk in the line, let's not see that tonight. Good job, good, perfect. Okay, so you just walked with different intent. Where did you feel that exercise? Where in your body? Right here, okay? Also, if I wanted to be mean, I could ask you all these questions while you're holding that heavy weight, and we would be also feeling our forearm and our grip and everything else, okay? Thank you. This water bottle is yours. Boom, okay? The farm walk is a staple that every single coach that you run into today will tell you to do. Every single one of them. I pray they better. If they if they don't come, my TPI certification, get it. Let's let's talk about it. Okay. When I do a farm walk, I can load that pattern, no matter how heavy or how light it is. I can load that pattern. I can load that client immediately. You've heard me say the word heavy. And I've pronounced it and I've been loud with it and I've done that on purpose. It's not to scare you. It's to make sure that you understand that during an off-season window, I want you to go after challenging weight. I want you to attack weight in a lower rep scheme so that I can go after strength training. Strength training does not always result in size. Hypertrophy training, which is a lower weight and a higher rep scheme, will develop muscle quicker than if I take a load that is challenging and lift it with more effort at a lower rep scheme. So our strength training protocols, or why I've been saying heavy so often, is what we do in the off season so that I have a strong golf golfer throughout the entire season. Now what I wanna do is make sure that we are understanding the difference between strength training and hypertrophy. I want to have a stronger athlete, so by the time it comes to get out of computer posture and into golf posture, I know that I've been training throughout the year to go after those patterns. I've been loading that pattern up, I am strong in my posture, and those are the things I'm chasing. The last two exercises. The last one is a balance component, and I'm gonna do a step up. I need one more person to come grab some sweet gear. Perfect, come on up. Oh, take that jacket off. That's what I'm talking about. Man's about to kill some step ups. Thank you for being brave. What's your name? 
Jesse, nice to meet you. I'm Duff. So, Jesse, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take you through an abbreviated balance test. So what I'm going to have you do is you're going to come up at 90 degrees. You're going to take your hands out. You're going to touch your right nose or with your right hand, not your right nose. And your left hand to your nose and then come back down. Go ahead. Good. The hand parts is just a joke. We hope that we don't see that tonight. Don't do that. Don't, don't do the hand part again. Okay. Now let's do the other leg. Let's test that out. Awesome. Good. Go ahead and touch your nose again. Oh, you fell for it twice, dude. Come on. Okay. When we go to test these things, Jesse's having some trouble on the left side a little bit more than the right. Am I immediately going to throw a ton of weight in this guy's hand and say, hey, Jess, let's see what happens, dude? Right? No. I got to make sure that you're comfortable at body weight stepping up and holding balance. Okay? Now, this box is not going anywhere. I, I know because hauling it from there to there is super hard. When you step up on this box, you're going to step up, you're going to hold a posture, you're going to step down, and then step down again. Good. All right, Jess. I'm going to give you a couple of tools here. You're going to pop down on your butt. Uh, on the, actually, you can sit on there for a sec. Slide these bands across your knees. I'm not going to have you step with that. That would be uh, way too interesting for me to see. What you're going to do is you're going to pop down on your butt once you've slid those, that green band around your knees. And you're going to do 10 to 15 reps. Let's do 15. Pop down on your butt on the beautiful carpet there. It's clean. Okay. You're going to lay flat. Bring your heels towards your butt. Okay. Drive your hips up to the sky. Go ahead, pull those bands apart. Good. Now, when I say pull the bands apart, I don't want you to move your feet. I just want you to spread your knees like this. Okay, go ahead down, like a really bad dance move. Go ahead, step up, spread your knees. Good. Come back down. You should feel your butt lighting up on fire. Good. Come back down and go up again. Down. Yep. Up. Bridge. Perfect. Good. Let's do 10 of those. butt on fire. It better be. I had to do these uh, this morning. Thanks. So I'm repaying the favor. Glute bridges in the morning, pre-coffee, rude. You were here for that one? All right, so my bad, dude. I'm repaying the favor. 10, slide that band off. Don't try and do it standing. It's always interesting when my clients do that. Okay, so now you're going to repeat that test. You're going to step up there. When you step up this time, we're going to change your intent a little bit. You're going to step up. When you step up this time, you're going to drive tall, put your heel through the ground, get as tall as you can with intent, step, and step down. You can keep your hands wherever you feel comfortable. I would suggest probably you know, try not to do a total airplane. When you go up, drive with intent, put that heel through the ground. Good. Did that feel a little bit different than the first time? It felt easier. That's the goal. Okay. Now, Jess, when you go to do this this time, you're going to step up. You're going to drive up. You're going to control the drop on the way down. I'm going to step up, drop, and control my step down. It's going to change where you feel the exercise a little bit. Good. Get all the way on the box. Don't get weird. We're on a stage. Good. And then control your drop as much as you can on this round. The box is a little tall. Good. Drop down. Perfect. Where are you feeling that exercise? Right. Right below your rear end. Right. So I've activated the glutes. Right. So we activated the glutes to make sure that when you step on, you are very comfortable in that posture. Jesse, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good job. So what we did for Jesse right there, is we change the intent of the exercise. We change the intent from step up on a box, blah, 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 let's kill some time, 
do this set, do this rep, to step up on the exercise, deliver a blow with that knee, and get into a strong posture. Just by me changing my tone of voice, you've all recognized that there is a different goal towards the exercise. I want you to step up with a purpose. I want you to stand there for a reason. I want you to get your shoulders back. Just by delivering the, the goal and the intent differently, you're gonna get a different outcome. If I walk into the gym to kill some time, that's all you're gonna achieve. If you walk into the gym, uh, huge pet peeve, the bike ride with the magazine in front, please stop it. Go in with a purpose. You've been given four exercises that you know from CoachKevinDuffy.com. You've been given four exercises. Step up. We've already gone over. Deadlift. Farm walk. You now have three exercises to go into with intent. When you go in with intent, you go in with a goal, you go in with the goal of beating all your buddies and taking all their money, you're gonna have a better output than you ever would have if you're just gonna go in and move laterally because you saw that in some magazine somewhere. Go in with a goal, go in with an intent. Now my last exercise that I'm talking about today before I have to wrap it up, the last exercise that I'm talking about is a pull up. Now calm down, I'm clearly out of water bottles and nobody wants to jump on stage and do a pull up unless they're super ripped, okay? Pete, calm down, you can't go up there. When you go on to this, when you go into a pull-up, here's where I want you to focus. We've been talking about intent. Not all of us can do pull-ups. Not all of us can walk into the gym, grab on a bar, rip them up and down like it's cool. Whether it's your first rep, or whether it's your first time hitting 20 in a row, I want you to enjoy the chase. I want you to enjoy the exercises that get you there. I want you to enjoy strapping your shoulders back, getting to good posture, pulling yourself over that bar, whether it's a TRX row, whether it's a TRX pull-up, a ring row, a dumbbell row, whatever variation of a pull pattern that can get you into that strong golf posture when you're over the ball, and whatever will get you there to chase that first pull-up is what I want you to do. When I've worked on all these four exercises, I made my athlete stronger in the hip hinge. I'm making sure to avoid any C posture or S posture by working on the proper deadlift. I've addressed my posture right there in that exercise right there. I've given that person confidence from any lie that they have that they know that they're strong there. Not only will I be working on a deadlift, a hex bar, a barbell, single leg, TRX versions, I'll be working every single deadlift pattern so that every single lie and every single time you get set up, you feel more confident. So that when I go into my backswing, I have a good ability to pivot. I know that my lats are strong and I can turn. Again, I am a lefty, we are humans too. When we go back into our turn, we're comfortable back there. I've been working on getting my shoulders to pull themselves back all off season. I've been focused on these exercises, so by the time I deliver that blow, I am balanced on one leg. I'm transferring weight from one side to the other through my step-up exercises, and by the time I deliver that blow, and I see that fade instead of that monster, hideous hook that we talked about from the uh, second guy who teed off, that I don't break down because I've worked on the farm walks required so that my only stopping power is not my spine. I worked on all the other exercises needed and I've trained everything I needed to get there. Now, perfect timing. What I wanna see from all of us and I want us to take home is the enjoyment. The enjoyment of going after these four exercises with the intent the challenges that we put in front of ourselves, it is the off season, I do want you to go after some more weight. As long as we're healthy and as long as we can load that pattern in this off season program, I want you to do it. I want you to enjoy and have fun. I want you to be walking in the weight room, throwing weights around like a savage and just hoping that no pedestrians get hurt in the process. I want you to enjoy the process of getting stronger in all these lifts, and I want you to enjoy the results even more. I want you to go home 
knowing that I put intent into the exercises I put out there in the gym. I put intent and I have a drive to go after strength training right now in this off season so that when I get out there, I'm taking as much money off of my buddies as I possibly can. Guys, I'm gonna be here to answer all of your questions. I've had an absolute blast being up here talking to you guys. If you guys have any questions, you can go on my website, it's coachkevinduffy.com, or every other social media handle is the same thing. I'll be here to answer any questions. Guys, I can't wait to be back next year. Thank you all for us being here with me today. Thank you.